Okay, so today we are playing with ASM manual lockout hubs for your four wheel drive. This model is for an Isuzu. Um, really works on most Isuzus, um, but for this application, we're going to be doing an Isuzu rodeo. And I am cleaning them up right now and re greasing all the components before the install. So, I already had it taken apart because I got these out of the junkyard and to get them off the vehicle I had to take them apart already to get to the inside there was a spacer and a snap ring to get it off the hub so now what I'm going to do is open up the back side um, to clean and grease the moving components where your CV axle rotates right here. So, I have some flathead screwdrivers, snap ring tools, um, all purpose grease, looks like that. And uh, we just want to take it apart and have some fun. So, first, these snap rings don't have eye holes for the snap ring tool, so they have a groove that will stick it in right here. And they're a little tricky. Even harder to get back on, but I want to make sure everything is good before I install them on my car. So we got that, we take our flathead screwdriver and pop it out of the groove that it's in. And there's your, that just comes out. And this is a uh, spacer or washer uh, to uh, make sure that snap ring goes in the groove nicely and reduces play. Um, so now you can see where this sat into. There was a spacer on this side and there's a spacer on this side. So we'll put that with that snap ring, put that over here. Next, there's another snap ring right here. And you can see that's moving so that comes out so what we're going to do is the same thing we just did pop our tool if it is we'll have to adjust this snap ring tool to be able to get it out because it's a little big. Not really. Okay. So, the snap ring pliers are too small for this large snap ring. So what I did is I used two flatheads to wiggle it out and jam them in. So now I'm going to pop it out and just keep moving. down the line Boop. and pop it goes so now this ring here comes right out like that so now that is fully disassembled 
and I can clean it up. And I'm going to take a break in cleaning it up, but what I'm basically going to do is um, clean it out with brake cleaner, get all the grease out. And if I have to, take a wire brush or a Dremel to it and um, clean the inside, the mating surfaces, and all that nasty rust on the inside of the bolt holes. And then we'll come back and put it back together and grease it up. So now, you can see, all nice and clean. We cleaned all this here in the spring. That is this setup right here. All that goes right here. You got the spring and it locks in and out um, to engage and disengage the uh, four wheel drive. And these gears up here engage with these gears right here and that's how it works inside it just you know goes in and out to engage and disengage so now what we're going to do is we cleaned up the last piece cleaned it up mostly as good as I'm going to get it um, I don't feel like it needs a re repainting it's just dirty and some age so we're going to roll with it so now I'm going to put it back this way and uh, there doesn't seem to matter which one's top or bottom so I'm going to get our trusty can o grease and we are going to just dunk dunk it and that was pretty crappy uh, right like that. There we go. And I'm gonna get towel. And clean up the excess grease for now. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to get this giganto, this bigger, yeah, that one, that's that one. So, we are going to start sliding it back in. So some leverage and I'm just gonna have to do some brute force on it. And there you go. Back in. Nice and tight, nice and snug. <clears throat> so now we're gonna move back to this. And uh, I'm make sure this yeah. make sure this is nice and clean as we can get it. I mean, we're just gonna re-grease it, but you don't want dirt and granules or chunks in between there to uh, ruin the mating surfaces. 
so um, I've been using this dial that is the front part as a sort of jig, if you will. Um, but first, this surface right here is what's going to run on the inside of this surface right here. So, I'm going to grease it. Um, can't have it too, uh, too much grease in here because you know, have your it's going to be spinning with your CV axle, so and we'll grease it up some more once it's in position. Oop. Already messed up. Um, there, is, there is a washer that goes on one side right here like that and then goes on like that. Now here I got another washer or spacer and then we got our other snap ring so let me get rid of some of this grease on my finger you know it doesn't matter right now screwdrivers and that'll get you snapped in. And now that's where the CV axle is going to go and now it is spinning. So when we install it I'm going to grease this up some more but I'm going to keep it clean right now because I got to clean the mating surface of my hub and the base of this lockout hub. So we're going to take this uh, paper towel and do that for now. Minimize the dirt in it. And Let's move on to the top. We are going to have to... Okay. Alright, so I left one top piece together as my example. So this is the front of your dial. Free is unlocked. Locked is locked, of course. So, um, when it's free, it's all scrunched up and it's away from in here because again these gears on the inside match with these gears on the inside and when they're together you're locked so it being pulled up and out of the way means it's just hovering and it's not engaged now when you turn I'm gonna hold the face plate here and turn the dial and you see it extends um, and it works better inside the hub but because there's no pressure on it but basically that's what I'm gonna this is the gasket that's the gasket but this is what I'm gonna reassemble because mine is in pieces I'm gonna reassemble this now so, um, let's, uh, 
open this up to lock so I can see this stuff better. When it locks, it'll get more like that. I mean, it can come loose, but when it locks, it comes out of this dial right here. And that spring keeps it there, engaged. And then, actually no. No, it just does this. This is how you take it apart. I'm sorry. So now, you see that snap ring in there to hold this dial in there? That's our first part that we are gonna do. So, I have some spare pieces and I went ahead and repainted them because obviously everyone's gonna see the face the front the most so I repainted these to color match my vehicle and uh, so we're going to put these two together that is the rubber gasket that I have laying around that came from one of these spare parts and it goes right in here so we're going to grease Grease this up a little bit. Not a whole lot, but just to uh, make it nice and slippery so it doesn't catch anywhere. Because this is what turns with the dial in that face plate. So what I'm going to do is here's my new dial. I'm going to take this and just spread it around. And there we go. We take a little excess and uh, smear it. And somehow just twist it a little bit. Right about here, probably when it popped in, it twisted just a little bit. There we go. Now let's I'm just gonna grease this a little bit. the inside of this
and take a pill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a paper towel ready. I'll clean off the excess grease once I put these two together. So we're going to have it this way. Make sure that the arrow Probably having trouble here because of the paint. So I had to uh, dremel away some paint on the inside. It became too thick, so there was no, not enough to fit this and have it turn nicely. So now I got the snap ring, and I put a little bit of grease in there, and we're gonna just do that. It's not all the way in yet. You just take your flat head. push down all around and now it's in so now free lock free lock it's a little tough right now but that's also because my hands are greasy but that will uh, work itself out all right, so now we got that. So I'll take model after that right there. Just sits like that in the retainer. And then our gear. Let's see
closet. Alright, so I have to take a minute to think. So, in this gear, you see that it's perfectly round there, and then the teeth start matching the teeth over here. So what happened was, there's a spring right here, and it coiled back up, so I didn't notice how much spring was actually there. So what's going to happen is the end of this is going to thread into this groove right here, and this is what's going to hold the gear together. So we're going to... Take, take this, and we're gonna pop the spring and rotate. Well, we don't need that on there. Not yet. And if it'll cooperate. Wants to fight. Because these here want to stay in between the outer teeth when you want to rotate this to lock it in, but we can't let that happen. this as a tool to uh, pull it away from the gear but also rotate So now that is nice and snug. And take a spring, have it on there. Take our new dial, and we're gonna squish, turn, and now it is. because it's in the free position right now. And that is... what you will get. So, you have your... We greased up this base piece and we put a little bit of grease in the dial. Now what we're gonna have to do is grease, grease around the gear. Um, we're gonna have to put a lot of grease in here, fill up the bottom, basically, and um, just make sure all the surfaces have grease. Pack it up nice, 
and then when we install it we'll put that spacer in the uh, snap ring right here to hold it on the CV shaft we'll bolt it up and then we'll put the top on and bolt it down and we'll be ready to go but that will be another video all in itself so for today that is how to get your hub ready for uh, to go in and go. And that'll bolt up and look just like that. So, till next time. Install time. Here's your hub. CV axles back here. Your knuckles right here. Top, bottom. All that good stuff. So what we're going to do first is um, take off these six bolts here. Obviously I put them on real tight last time. Alright, so, had to fast forward, um, what we had to do is I needed someone else to hold down the brake pedal, uh, to hold the rotor in place while I was undoing these hubs, because otherwise the whole thing spins. So, I did that on both sides, and I took the bolts out, and it was just that cover here. This is the uh, flange that's on the hub and right here is your spring C-clip. Alright, now we'll pop the C clip off. Put it right there for safekeeping. And now this just slides off. And there's the front side of your hub. Now what we're going to do is we got to clean up this mating surface right here. Um, I already did it on the back of the hubs um, earlier. Um, so I have to clean the actual hub. And then we're going to put RTV to make a gasket and install it. 
so I'll be right back. Alright, so, RTV, this is how we're going to do it, just squeeze it out, when you're doing this, it has to be one solid bead, all done at once. Fucking it up. Right. Mm -hmm. and then okay. So now we have our base and uh, we can slide this on. 
now we'll put a bolt in up top to line it. We're going to hand tighten these bolts first. We'll get the C clip ready just in case it works out. So, what we're going to do is we're going to slide this on like that and I'm not going to torque them down with this but it's just a quicker way to uh, get them That's hand tight. That's hand tight. That's hand. Alright, so they're all tightened as well as I'm going to get with my hand. So now I'm going to put the seat clip back on because I see that I can do so. But before that, there, these came with washers that have to go on with it. And that'll keep the axle from coming out. And that doesn't move too much. So I'm going to do the other side and then we'll be back in an hour when I. And we're back much later but we have this nice little light and hopefully you guys can see everything that I'm gonna finish up on here so we still have to um, tighten down those bolts So we'll go in a star pattern.
Alright, and now we're ready for the RTV. Same deal like on the uh, back side. Now, on these hubs, I don't know if you can see, but right there is a um, clip that's bent in between these two teeth. There's one on each side, and you have to put that pair of teeth. in these slots instead of the, the grooves. So this big slot takes that pair of teeth. So in my case, right here, So now we got the front plate on, and now we're just putting our bolts in, and we're only going to do them uh, finger tight like the last ones. So, I got them all finger tight, and now we gotta let it sit for another hour. Looking back, I probably could have done this earlier when I put the C-clip in. I could have done the RTV after I did it on the base here, and let them both sit for an hour and come back and torque both of them. But, that would make it harder getting to the bolts here to torque them. So in a way it is better that I left it, um, it makes it a lot easier. So after I let it sit for an hour I will torque these bolts down. Um, I don't have any of the torque specs for these 
but what I've been doing is holding it pretty short and um, and tightening them pretty tight um, and, I, and I'm saying I gripped it short so I don't have too much torque on the ratchet to over tighten them so I just got them tight enough that it won't go no anywhere but um, not too tight um, and I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna grip it right at the ratchet so I don't do too much torque and uh, that'll be it and then this will be your final product the lock and unlock um, and yeah, that's the whole purpose of this project.